And so this hidden life of Nazareth allows us to enter into this fellowship with Jesus in the most ordinary things of everyday life. You know, this is part of the good news, my friend. Most of us have rather ordinary lives. And it's good news to know that everything in our life helps us, or should, to enter into this relationship and union with Jesus the Lord. The mysteries of our Lord's public life are also eminently important, and they teach us. The baptism of Jesus I spoke about a little bit already. He baptized the waters. Jesus didn't need a baptism of repentance. He had no sin. But why was he baptized? John didn't want to do it. He knew basically who he was dealing with. I, I can't do this, Lord, or you have to. He baptized the waters. And so the waters of baptism throughout the ages are made holy because life himself went into the waters, sanctifying those waters of baptism. Through baptism, we Christians are assimilated sacramentally into Christ. That's what I've been talking about. We're in him. That's why our life is so important, so powerful, so meaningful, because we live and move and have our very being in the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. We know Jesus was tempted in the desert. This is, I, I could go on at length. Remember that movie, The Last Temptation of Christ? Terrible theology. Was Jesus tempted in the desert? Yes, he was. There are two kinds of temptation or two dimensions to it. You can be tempted from the outside. That's to be tempted. That's temptation. Certainly the devil tempted Jesus in the desert. He did get subjected to temptation. Could Jesus have sinned? No. Impossible. Could Jesus have sinned? No. Why not? Because number one, he had no sin, no original sin, hence no tendency to sin. Not only that, not only was he without any sin, he enjoyed the beatific vision. I could ask the question, can the blessed in heaven sin? Of course not. Are they free? Yes. Oh, well, then, if, but if they're free, they could sin. No, that's not freedom. True freedom is having your freedom liberated so that you only choose the good and become more and more free. So the blessed in heaven can't sin. Impossible to sin. Why? Because they are confirmed in grace. The immediate vision of God, the beatific vision, confirms them in grace, and they couldn't sin at all. Jesus had that grace. Beyond that grace, he had the grace of the hypostatic union. His human nature united to the nature of God in the one only divine person of the eternal word, Jesus. The kingdom, the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus preached what all the prophets before him had preached. Repent, turn to the Lord. Repent and believe in the gospel. The kingdom of God is at hand. You know, all of us have to live that. We have to believe that. We have to preach that. In the kingdom, Jesus made it present here on earth. The kingdom here is the beginnings of the kingdom, I should say, the church. That's the beginnings of the kingdom. The heavenly Jer Jerusalem right now is the church. Now, imperfect, yes, in her members. We are in need of perfection in the members of the church. But Jesus began his public life by entrusting to 12 men the keys of the kingdom. Actually, to one of the 12, to Peter. Simon Peter holds the first place among the apostles. Jesus entrusted a unique mission to Peter and his successors, the popes. Jesus entrusted authority to them. He said, I give you the keys of the kingdom and whatever you hold bound on earth will be held bound in heaven. Whatever you hold loosed on earth will be held loosed in heaven. The power to bind and loose that Peter has through the Petrine uh, primacy or the ministry of the the papacy is threefold. The authority to absolve sins, to pronounce doctrinal statements, and to make discipline. The church has the authority through this power of the keys to change her discipline. You know, once we didn't meet on Friday, the church had the authority to make that, that precept of the church, and when it was in place, we had to obey it under pain of sin. 
Now the church can dispense with that, which she has, but Friday remains a day of penitential observance. So the church has the power to bind and loose, to make discipline. That's part of the power of the keys, the power to forgive sins, the power to pronounce doctrinal statements, the power to in, be involved or, or make discipline in the church. Now Jesus entered Jerusalem. We call that now Passion Sunday or Palm Sunday. We commemorate that. Remember how he did it? He did it on the foal of an ass. He did it humbly. The Lord of Lords and the King of Kings entered the holy city seated on the foal of an ass. He did not come in on a war horse which is what the Jewish people were waiting for, a Messiah that would liberate them from political domination. No, he didn't do it that way. He did it in humility, and he taught us a lesson. If you want to have power in the kingdom, if you want to do the Lord's work, you can't do it other than the way that he did it. Humble obedience. St. Paul gives us the clue in his letter to the Philippians. Never act out of rivalry or conceit. Rather, let all parties think humbly of others as superior to themselves. Each of you looking to others' interest rather than your own. Your attitude must be that of Christ. Though he was in the form of God, he did not deem equality with God something to be grasped at. Rather, he emptied himself and took the form of a slave, being born in the likeness of men. He was known to be of human estate, and it was thus that he humbled himself, obediently accepting even death, death on a cross. Because of this, God highly exalted him and bestowed upon him the name above every other name, so that at Jesus' name, every knee must bend in the heavens on the earth and under the earth, and every tongue proclaim to the glory of God the Father, Jesus Christ is Lord. God bless you.